Good evening guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, to today's video review where I want to take a look at this particular Pagani design watch. So second Pagani design that I'm going to feature as a full review. Uh, and thank you again to Samuel, local watch enthusiast and supporter who has kindly made a number of his watches available for me to feature on the channel. So, um, you know, that is a uh, very generous offer that I've, uh, you know, taken up with good enthusiasm. Um, before we get into this particular watch, I just want to quickly show what's on my wrist here. So this is the Orient M-Force Bravo, of course, which I reviewed uh, not so long ago. And uh, I've just changed out the strap to this, uh, which, um, you know, as far as I can tell, is the pumpkin orange from Barton straps, which uh, Samuel also provided uh, the, the watch as well as this strap along with the box. So I've just swapped it out to try it out and I really quite like it, you know, it, and the orange really goes very well with the, the uh, I guess, the color themes and motifs uh, that you can see on this particular watch. So uh, to show a little bit about the strap here, let me just take it off and uh, you can see uh, there it is on the watch. Uh, and just quickly to show that it is a, a quick release strap, so very conveniently you can just you know flick that tab there uh, in and out, and there we go, quick change. I mean, this watch also has the drill lugs, which makes it very easy to swap out the original bracelet. Uh, but you know, this one just makes it that much easier. You don't even need a pin to to stick into the drill lugs. You can just use your finger to s swap it out. So that's something I've had quite a bit of fun with actually. This uh, um, you know, pumpkin orange from there we go, Barton straps there. Uh, links below, of course, to uh, relevant product pages that I can find on the internet. All right, so just put that aside the Orient M Force on the Barton straps. Um, and let's get into this particular box uh, the Pagani design box uh, that you can see there. All right, nice and simple. Uh, it's a little bit of texture on the card here, but it is just a basic card uh, box. Uh, open it up and this watch is you know one of the largest watches that I've uh, featured uh, I'm just busting out of the box you know, again that microfiber uh, cleaning cloth with Pagani design there uh, manuals on the side there but nothing very uh, I guess spectacularly complicated it's just pretty you know basic stuff uh, just a quick flick through Right, just a bit of uh, stuff, and then it goes into the Chinese half of the manual, right? Pagani design, and then a bit of a manual card and a serial number there. So, I'm not going to take that out too much, and let's just get the watch out of the case, put that aside, and here we have it. Okay, so take a look at this. So, this is uh, the Pagani design 48 millimeter automatic, which I like to call. Uh, the Avenger Blackbird because uh, if you uh, know your Breitling watches I think there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that this is an homage uh, to the Avenger Blackbird you know just take a look at the picture that I will uh, link up and put up here for comparison uh, you know very very clearly at least in my mind that this is uh, a copy slash homage of that particular watch and it's in this very Kind of stealth black PVD as you can see me hold uh, here. Um, so online you can uh, or at least at times have been able to uh, find this for 70 USD. At the moment I can't find any uh, particular specific uh, listings to, to share but you know that's what uh, this was purchased for as far as Samuel has told me. Uh, the movement in here again with Pagani is a Seagull ST6 so that's pretty uh, you know, it's pretty pleasing that they have implemented that movement. And this one actually has a display bag that uh, I can kind of show some of that. You know, look at that rotor. It's kind of nicely edged with Pagani symbol there. So that's obviously customized, but uh, you can see the movement below there. A pretty small uh, oscillator uh, with balance fuel there, actually. I must say, that's one of the smallest ones I've seen. But, you know, there, there it is, the movement. Pretty compact in there. 21,600 beats per hour, 17 joule, and as far as I can uh, research, it's a 30-hour approximate power reserve. 
um, uh, the other features here, it's got the quick set date, in this case implemented at the three o'clock uh, window there on the white disk, which, you know, appropriate, I think, because uh, it kind of like brings some symmetry into the uh, that three o'clock marker that it's broken off there. So you can see it kind of blends into that a bit to, to bring back some symmetry. Uh, it, it does hack and it does have a manual wine option here. Um, the case is pretty massive. Okay, so the, the bezel itself is 48 millimeters across. If you look at uh, the part where the tabs are, right there, uh, or the case itself, it's slightly more than that, about 48.5 uh, millimeters, a thickness at 15 millimeters, and the lug width appropriately for this size is a 24 millimeter uh, lug width. And the lug to lug, right, one of the massive. Uh, most massive pieces that I've uh, featured here. So the lug to lug here is uh, 58 millimeters, no less than that. 125 grams though on the total weight because it is a leather strap watch. It doesn't have a heavy metal bracelet to go with it. Right, fully brushed black PVD all around. Uh, as you can see me turn it around, you can see it is actually fully brushed matte style PVD. Uh, on the case. Um, the case back, right, I, I think it might be a push-in case back here. You know, I mean, it, it kind of has this appearance that it might be a screw-in, but uh, this doesn't look particularly functional to me. This, this These edges here that uh, are kind of like a cog or a nut uh, for it to be unscrewed, I, I think that might just be decorative if you look at the, the shallowness of the edges here. So I have a feeling this might just be a push-in case back, but the crown is very pretty nicely implemented screw in, you know, I mean, I'm just I'm not sure if you can hear the action there, but it screws in pretty solidly uh, and, and that feels very watertight actually. Uh, but you know, the, the overall water rating you can see there, it's, it's just 30 meters that they've uh, gone for probably as a, a, a basic denominator. All right, moving on to the dial. Um, no, there's quite a bit of reflection from the glass, but, but the dial does appear to be a flat black uh, to me uh, with pretty simple printing, right? You just got a Pagani design at the 12 and then automatic at the bottom, which I quite like that they've kept it simple, unlike the homage uh, that it, it, it kind of does. Uh, the Breitling actually has four letters of text at the bottom. This one just has automatic. I, I like how they've cleaned uh, the dial to, you know, kept it to that simple printing. It's got pretty simple hands, much like the Breitling, right? Just this baton style, simple hands. And it's got a mar applied markers all around in similar style to the watch that it emerges with a triangle at the 12 o'clock uh, position here. Uh, the loom is pretty basic, right? It, it's certainly not super luminova, or at least it doesn't behave anywhere near that. Uh, it works, but it, it doesn't work for very long. And I'll put up a loom shop, obviously, for you to take a look at how it uh, lights up in the dark, along with that, that fat, fat bezel pit there. Um, so the, the bezel, okay, you can see the bezel is, uh, again, with the same brushed uh, matte PVD, uh, but it does have very deeply recessed numerals, which is a, a nice look, actually. Right? Let me just get the light shining across here, all the numerals. It's nicely deeply recessed, and it's got these rider tabs, which is... Uh, I guess what some of the Breitling models are famous for, you know, this kind of like tabs that you can grab even if you have a very thick gloved hand, you know, very easy to grab those tabs and turn the bezel. Right, let me just let you hear that. Right, and if you if you count the clicks, it's actually a 90 click unidirectional bezel, it's not 120 click, just like the other Pagani design uh, that I've done. Uh, but this one's actually tighter, right? It, it doesn't play sideways. It does play back and forth a bit, okay? There's a bit of pay, play back and forth, but overall, in terms of the tightness uh, along the glass, it's actually pretty tight. Right? It's tighter than the other one, uh, the Aqua Racer uh, Pagani design that I reviewed earlier. Right, the, 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 the glass on top here uh, is a domed mineral, uh, but as you see me pan it around, so there's a bit of a blue hue, which is kind of pleasant. You know, I, I don't think the, the, the dial is throwing that off. A dial, I think, is actually black. Uh, and the blue hue is actually from the glass itself. And I don't know whether that's 
a part of the glass or the anti-reflective treatment or what. Uh, but, you know, and I don't even know whether that's intentional. But it, it's a nice little effect, actually. It's a, an effect that can be appreciated, as you can see there. All right, moving on to the band. Uh, it, it's basic stitch leather. Uh, not much to uh, say, really. Um, you know, let's let you look at this dark stitch leather. All right, it's this is uh, genuine leather at the back there. Uh, Pagani design on the other side and a black uh, PVD steel buckle with a bit of a Pagani symbol there on the side. Right, that's all, that's all that is really uh, now. So let me just put this on now for the, the wrist shot. And there we have the massive Avenger Blackburn homage Pagani design on my wrist. Clearly too large a watch at 48 millimeter across and that 58 millimeter uh, lug to lug distance for my 17 centimeter wrist. It is just too large, you know, I think uh, by any uh, standards there, but you know, it, it, it can be worn. It just doesn't look uh, very proportionally uh, appropriate. Okay, so what have I particularly uh, noted about this uh, package? Well, again, I think it's pretty impressive for the 70 USD that this costs. Uh, you know, the, the finishing, I can't complain about it. You know, the, the brush finishing of this black PVD is is absolutely fine. Uh, you know, the, the actual brightening, I think it's actually DLC, right? You would expect that for the price you pay for brightening. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just black PVD. Uh, but, you know, not bad at all. And, and it homages it pretty well. Uh, that glass hue, I think that's pretty cool. That blue, not, not sure if it's intentional again, but pretty cool, pretty nicely, uh, uh, you know, affected there, uh, whether, you know, that was actually part of the design. Uh, and then it's got that fair movement, you know, the Seagull ST6. You know, all that for 70 USD not bad at all right you know what's the weaknesses well it's one of the most massive steel watches that i've ever featured you know if not the biggest one in terms of pure diameter there so it's not for everyone right not everyone is going to be able to carry a 48 millimeter massive steel watch like this uh, you, you have to have a large wrist i think uh, to to carry this appropriately uh the loom is poor all right i'm going to say that straight out this loom don't expect it to function through the whole night. Uh, you'd have to charge it with a bright light to get any, uh, you know, reasonable use out of it uh, for the first hour, maybe. Uh, and the bezel action, right? There's a little bit of weakness there, uh, but but better than the other one, the other Pagani design. So guys, there's a look at the Pagani design Avenger Blackbird homage. Uh, let me know what you think about this watch. You know, if you if you've had experience with this particular brand this particular model. I'd like to know what you think. Uh, guys, if you enjoy my videos, uh, do consider subscribing, I'm putting out new content weekly, uh, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I will catch you next time.